How does this new technology work that is now being launched in Latin America and is already super famous in Korea, which is the facial scanner? What is it used for? How is it used? Is it really something that will become part of our routine in orthodontics? Will it be as popular as intraoral scanners? Watch this video because it's our mission to stay as updated as technology is advancing every day. I made this video here for you to get updated on the latest technology in orthodontics. All right? Welcome everyone to this channel. Today we are going to talk about this new technology, the facial scanner in orthodontics. And I want to give you all the details about all the features, how it works, how you can get one, because I'm going to tell you a bit of the history. When I first discovered the facial scanner, I was amazed. And I want you to get updated, because I truly believe that this can greatly change the clinical practice of each one of us, all right? If you arrived on time, take advantage and leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel, because today's video will be like your trip to the United States. Share it with friends who like orthodontics and also leave in the comments later what your opinion is about this new technology. So, basically, what is a facial scanner? When I saw this technology over there in the United States. Every year, I have a commitment in my life to attend the American Orthodontics Congress. When I went to Miami, I saw this scanner for the first time, and I was amazed, but at the time, it was very expensive, so I ended up not getting it. And then this year in New Orleans, I saw the technology again. The quality was extremely good, and I was delighted. I got in touch with the company until my facial scanner arrived, which was about 15 days ago. I'm going to show you why I was so enchanted and why I strongly believe this will become popular in our offices. If you attended any of my classes, you know that I have a diagnostic criterion called FOCA. It's the facial occlusal, cephalometric analysis and anamnesis. And the facial analysis comes first. That's why, when I saw that it would be possible to place the patient's face in 3D to do volumetric analysis, I was completely in love. And that starts to change the mindset because diagnoses can be much more precise. You can achieve a more perfect analysis of the patient and certainly have treatment plans that are more efficient. Let's go ahead and learn a little more about the scanner. First, you already know that the scanner is used to make the facial diagnosis. Before, we used to do the facial diagnosis in a very morphological way, right? We have the facial analysis guide, which is an instrument I developed to even improve this analysis. But facial analysis has always been something very difficult to do, very full of information, and requiring extensive training to perform a complete facial analysis. The facial scanner. First, I show you how the device works. So this is the scanner device, and it's a bit large, right, because it has to scan the patient. I placed it inside a room where I already had my tomograph. Now let's talk about what this facial scanner is like. You need a white wall so you can scan the patients, and it is always connected to a computer. So you need to have a computer next to it, and you can adjust the head of this scanner to different regions depending on the patient's height. So the idea is to position the patient in a natural head position and then you will place the orientation lines on this patient. So you will always place the orientation line under the base of the nose. You always need three photographs to perform the scan. Previously, you needed many photographs to transform the face into. 3D. Nowadays, it's only three. It's a photograph of the patient looking straight ahead. 
Then a photograph of the patient looking to the right side at about 45 degrees, where the straight line will coincide with the most posterior part again. Then a third photograph, 45 degrees to the opposite side. After you have taken these photos, you just click on Merge, and then in just a few seconds, your patient's face will be rendered in three dimensions, and that's when it begins. The best of the best is when we can achieve a wonderful analysis. At this moment, you might simply want to perform the facial analysis, or you can add other documentation. For example, if you want to include digital models, if you want to add the x-ray section, you can then include the lateral cephalometric x-ray, the patient's panoramic x-ray, interaural photos, because this will allow you to have a complete record of your patient within the facial scanner software. But if you don't want to add more files, you can go directly to the facial scanner section. Is that okay? So you're going to place, align the patient's head if there is any issue, and then position the planes correctly. After aligning, if you modified any point that sometimes wasn't right, note that at this moment the points are placed by artificial intelligence. And there you can make certain modifications if you want. If you see that the soft tissue gonion is not well positioned, you go ahead and place it in the correct position or the swallow is not well positioned, he goes and places it in the correct position. But in general, the artificial intelligence works quite well. Once that's done, we move on to the analyses, because from there, you can perform different analyses. You know, when your patient is asymmetrical, in this case, you can use the function, which is an asymmetry by volume function. So you can come here and perform a volume analysis of the patient's right and left sides, as well as by facial thirds. And that way, you can check if your patient is truly asymmetrical or not. There is another tool where you can perform a volume analysis, including size considering the interorbital distance. There are also other possibilities for you to create a before and after for the patient simulating the position of the teeth and mouth and having a 3D analysis of how the change would look after orthodontics. And there are other functions like a heat map that you can compare. The idea behind this is that you can take different facial scans in a child, track the growth, and be able to overlay the growth of the patient's face. I'm really excited here because now all the children will be scanned and I will be able to track the growth of each one of them. Then you might say, Professor, what about cephalometry? The facial scanner can also perform cephalometry. And the answer is yes. The facial scanner also has cephalometry features, which is very cool because everything is in one place. But there are also other possibilities. Within the facial scanner software, you can add the lateral cephalic x-ray and have something that doesn't exist in other software, which would be the ability to overlay the lateral cephalic x-ray, which is two-dimensional, with a facial scanner that is three-dimensional. Amazing, the possibilities we have today to improve our diagnosis. So we come here with this little red arrow, align the patient's profile with the x-ray, and also through artificial intelligence, it places the exact points of all the points according to the chosen analysis. You can choose a cephalometric analysis. You can define the points, and you can also create a new analysis if needed. So there I have all the angles, planes, lines, and I can also make simulations, for example. For example, the patient is a child patient who is going to undergo maxillary protraction. And I know that with maxillary protraction, I can advance from 2 to 4 millimeters from point A. This is fully documented in the scientific literature. So I can come with the entire maxilla advance the maxilla completely, up to, for millimeters more medially. 
And then I can see the effects on the profile after the advancement and obtain these three-dimensional images before and after. Look at how the technology is. I can also make adjustments to the patient's face in 3D. And I can also, in a completely automatic way, after I have finished, for example, my treatment with a facial mask, place the before cephalometric image the after cephalometric image and manage to do the superimposition without any effort because it does it automatically it was possible for us to integrate the facial diagnosis which is something very relevant very important with three-dimensional technology it is also possible for us to make several records and obtain color maps to know where growth is occurring whether the maxilla is growing more or the mandible is growing more. The complete analysis of growth. And one last feature that I won't discuss in today's video, but we can talk about in another video, is the possibility of integrating the CT scan with the facial scanner, which is already the highest level of technology. Maybe you felt the same excitement as the professor of all this technology. I am very happy to see that there are people thinking about improving our diagnostic criteria in our practice. But what benefits can you see for yourself? Isn't it? There are two possibilities to access a scanner like this. In this case, I bought one because I have a fairly large patient flow here and I really like investing in technology. So if you're that kind of person, you can have one too. So, the people from Korea can send you a facial scanner. I will post on their Instagram, Morpheus3D. They are really good people. You can talk to James. I think that's his name. Or I will also leave their contact information in the video description. Or another possibility is that you ask your radiology center to get in touch with them because sometimes the radiology center can acquire. The facial scanner and maybe having this access will be easier for you. You can do it in these two ways. And what benefits did I start to see immediately? First, that the diagnoses are much more accurate. And when you have a much more accurate diagnosis, you have a more efficient treatment plan, a shorter treatment for your patient. We are implementing it now, and we are already seeing great results. And another thing that is not directly connected to the knowledge part, but is also related, is that when a patient sees this facial scanner and you manage to explain what growth anomalies they have, whether they are an adult or a child, the chance of you closing a treatment is 100%. So, the part of closing treatments also improves significantly when you have technology. I always tell my students, that there are two types of investments that are the best investments of our lives. One is in knowledge and the other is in equipment so that you can work. From the moment we start paying more attention to technology, you can start small with a periapical x-ray machine, but we begin to live in the future and not in the present. We start becoming professionals of the future, so I highly recommend it. It truly began to change my life when I started prioritizing both education and equipment for my practice as well. I heard that over in Korea, facial scanners are already completely popularized. Like, more than 90% of dentists have a scanner, some type of scanner, including the facial scanner in their practices. So I strongly believe that. In the coming years, we will also have access to these technologies in our practices to already introduce the entire facial scanner into the education of my students. Because just a short time ago, we opened registration for our Intercept Diploma Group. Within the Intercept course, they will already have study content for clinical cases with a facial scanner. So I believe it will greatly change. Conception they have of diagnosis and treatment plans in Intercept inter course. And if you who are here, here I'd like to study more, study with the scanner technologies. You can be part of the waiting list for the interceptive because it covers all topics in interceptive orthodontics and also the technology part to join now. Starting from these next modules of diplomacy, 
If you want to be part of the next group, I will leave the waiting list, okay, here, with the link to the waiting list, and you can register your name, your phone number, and your details, so that when there is an opportunity, the team can get in touch with you. I hope you have enjoyed the scanner. Morpheus, I hope you have seen how technology is advancing. If you like this video, leave a like. The teacher will really appreciate it. If you leave a like here, leave your opinion about the facial scene in the comments. If you liked the video, if you liked the new uses. And also activate notifications to receive the next videos. All right? A kiss from a teacher. See you in the next video, and bye-bye.